here we are at VK in Nash Vegas. Yep. In Nashville. Nashville. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun, Nam. Have you been down to the show? I have. Good. It's been a lot of fun. I love the Nashville community because everybody knows everybody. Everyone's friends. Super tight. There seems to be a lot less competitiveness than there is in other communities. Absolutely. It's definitely more about support. And everybody loves music and gear. Mm -hmm. And you guys are the center and the hub for that. We are. Because you've got everything. you got, look, there's drums there. They have drums in a pro audio place. It's pretty awesome. But you know what I love? Before we get into talking about millions of other things, you've got an awesome collection of amps here. We do. Now obviously JC120 is actually a staple, one of my favorite amps from the 80s. And just an unbelievable freaking amp. But what about these boutiques? Now the Supro, obviously, they reissued those. Those are amazing. Magnetone reissued, amazing. But I don't know the Jackson and the Stone Deaf. What can you tell us about yeah, those? Yes, Jackson's based out of Texas. Um, they make a lot of really interesting Fender and Marshall type sounding amps. Great. Um, great builders starting to build some pedals now too. Fantastic. And then Stone Deaf, they kind of started more in the pedal world and are now branching out into amps. Um, a lot of functionality, a lot of built-in effects. Wonderful. There's some wizard cabs there, was that? Yep, yep, still got a couple wizard cabs. Um, I think we're out, we've sold out of all of our wizard amps. Those are amazing. Yeah. Have you I've, ever used one? I have, and, and I know uh, Tim Pierce, I think, has one, and of mm -hmm. course he's the greatest session player there is, and he loves them. Um, that's a weird looking wizard cab, what's yeah, that's, that? Yeah, that's a wizard bass cab. Oh, it's a bass cap. Yeah, it's a two by 10. Wow, nice. So look, Graham Fricker's over there. Hey, bass is lift. Yes. Um, all right, awesome stuff. You've got a nice collection of amps and stuff here. Mm -hmm. Also, there's a Jackson head. Awesome, I don't know this, Analog Outfitters. Analog so. Outfitters, they're a small company. They're building awesome, awesome amps into old road signs. So that's the stop sign that they've bent oh, yeah. into a chassis. Very cool. Now the Jackson. Uh, what do you got going on That's down the there? Boss Waza Craft head. I've heard good things about those. It's not bad. People like them. And then a little Stone Deaf. Mm -hmm. And then an Earth Quaker Devices. Yeah, a very, a very simple amp from Earth Quaker Devices. Earth Quaker makes a bunch of guitar pedals. Awesome. Um, really great pedal platform. Okay, so talking the word guitar pedals. So we've got a nice selection up here. We also have, look at this. This is fun. See, this is guitar heaven. This is what we love. So I, I don't know where to start. There's so much cool stuff that you have. I mean, you've got hundreds of different pedals. Um, there is even more here. So if you're a guitar player, especially in the Nashville area, obviously you can come down and have a lot of fun. Oh, I like the cab there for analog outfitters. Mm -hmm. Just being ADD for a second and flipping over there. That's pretty, pretty freaking awesome. Yeah, so we got drawers and drawers of pedals here. Just gorgeous, yeah. So it'll keep you very busy. Oh, it's nice, some electro harmonic stuff as well, not to be ignored, I like that. Yeah, great. You have any favorites? Tons. Tons? It would be, it would be impossible give to me, Give me like top off. five, what are your top fives? Top five. Um, Strymon Timeline. People love that, I heard great um, things about Strymon. The Klon KTR, sounds just like the old ones. Oh, it does? It does. But not $900? Not, or $2,500 on what? the used market. Oh, yeah. Really, they yeah. gone that much? Yeah. Last time I checked, they were $900, now they're 2500 2500 on eBay. Wow. Um, that's great. The Guru's Echo Sex. Yeah. It's like a, a Benson Echo Rec. Oh, lovely. Pedal. With a tube. Yep. 12X7 ECC 83. God bless it. And Wonderful. then a personal favorite, the Keeley uh, Neutrino. It's an envelope filter. You heard, of, you heard that? You said a personal favorite is the Keeley, the envelope oh, filter. Go. Yep. Yeah. Glenn's a fan of Keeley. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah he's great. That's great. Oh, awesome. I do love those calves. I, I kind of, I, I almost just want to get one just because of that. <laughs> Use it Gorgeous. as an end table. Beautiful. Just looks good. All right, now let's move over to some pro audio. There's a party going on at the moment. Pardon me. Oh, you're good. <laughs> it just started, it's like four in the afternoon. Nam finished early today. So, wow. This, this looks like a Gefell. It is. Um, like the early, what was that model called? What is this one? That's a UMT-71. Yeah, mm -hmm. these are beautiful. So they're remaking them? They are. Oh, gorgeous. I love these mics. This is a beautiful mic. I've used the old ones. Yeah, it's really one wonderful. of the, it still has an M7 capsule in it. it I mean, I it is outstanding on everything. Yeah, and how much are these? You know, top of your um, head? Like $1,200. Yeah, what if people don't know about that? It's, it's a hidden gem. People in Nashville know, but it hasn't quite yeah. Quite grown. Because I used the, uh, the old ones and they were absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the M7 capsule. We're talking like, yeah, 1200 bucks is a great price. Yep. Um, okay, what's next up? Uh, that's the Urton. I don't know that. I've never seen that before. 
Uh, it's, it's a U47 type. Um, they have a, if you see the little blue LED. I do, yeah. That's an LED shining on a diamond on the inside. Oh, wow. For aesthetic purposes, I guess. Okay, well, yeah, I don't, like you do. I, it's, it's not in the actual audio path, but that's I tell okay. my wife she'll want one. Yeah. It's got a diamond in it. Exactly. All right, so <laughs> next up. Uh, Wonder 67. Wonder Wonderful. Audio. Yep. Soyuz, Soyuz, we love these guys. Yep. We love these guys. They're really cool. David's a great guy. Great products, great prices. Manly. I've, I've, last time I was out here, I hung out with Carl Lanning. And Carl has the Manly Gold. Mm -hmm. And he just raved on about it. It was the best vocal mic. And yeah. he's done what, Dolly Parton, George Jones, you name it. And raved on about the mic. And I didn't realize, I, and they're not inexpensive, so don't misquote me. But I didn't realize how much cheaper than I, I thought. I thought these mics were like ten or fifteen thousand dollars. No, no, they're no, twenty twenty eight hundred dollars for twenty eight hundred dollars yep. for this mic. Yep. And I know that's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. I, if I was a kid stuck coming up, there's no way I'd spend twenty eight hundred dollars. But for a mic that's like, you know, do I use this vintage U forty seven or this vintage U sixty seven or this Manly? To be in that realm, mm -hmm. twenty eight hundred dollars is pretty darn good. It is. And Ava Manley is awesome. Um, okay, more Gefels. More Gefels. Beautiful. Big fan of Gefels. Is this a real one? No, that should be a Flea 12, I think. Oh, it is. I don't see any logos. No. Beautiful. Now, what have we got coming up next? That should be a Flea 149. That's a Flea, yeah. Yep. Is this a 563? Yep. Oh, Halo goes around this. This is my Desert Island microphone. Really? Yeah. I believe this is the most useful mic I've ever used. There was a studio in Indiana that I'm sure you know of called Echo Park Studios that recently has sold all of its gear and they had a pair of these and it would be my room mics for my drums and the main drum sound it would be my like throw it on vocal acoustic guitar i think this is you know because this is like the original lollipop mic that was like the precursor to the 47 right. I, I believe this could be the greatest mic ever made but that's just me <laughs> everybody can argue with me another flea yep. beautiful i know you guys sell them like hotcakes don't oh you? yeah we do so this is a new mic this is a mic shop Looks cool. I'd love to hear it. Uh, and the Bach, which is a beautiful mic. Mm -hmm. 251. Two, oh, beautiful. Both of those are. Wow. One with and one without logo? Is one, a... One's Telefunken, one is uh, Upton 251. Really? Mm -hmm. How much closer looking can you get? It's pretty spot on. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Now this, we were actually stopped. I had not known about this Ocean Way. So this is obviously a ribbon. Tell me about this. It's, it's really detailed. It's really cool on vocals. Um, I especially like it on acoustic guitars. I'm a little terrified because... You're right up on it. Yeah, you're you right can, up on the ribbon. Yeah, you got to be careful. Yeah. No poking it. No. Nope. <laughs> and then uh, Wes Dooley's stuff. Wes is a great guy. And a couple of... This is one of my favorite mics. I have this on my piano at all times. It's great on vocals if you want something with real texture. And yeah, AEA stuff is fantastic. Yep. Great. Very nice. So it's awesome. the same as the LA office that you can come in and you can put on a pair of headphones and test yep. out, go around and try them all out. Yeah, we will We will custom do any sort of mic, mic chain, mic preamp, compressor, whatever you need. Great. Fantastic stuff. All right. All right, so what we have here is one of my favorite things on the planet, 1608. I think we bought with the Frey bought it from you guys and I want to say it was like the fourth or fifth or something like that yeah. it was the first ten sold okay I think Hunter Crowley I don't know if you were around in those days mm -hmm. I think he bought one or two Chevy might remember yeah he bought one of the first or second ones and he told me this is the greatest console ever you have to go and buy one so when we made the second Frey record in 2000 we were seven or six five whatever it was these were brand new and we got one this is obviously a newer one now with flying with the flight, automation with yeah. automation sorry we didn't have that but I would say Without a doubt, one of the most versatile analog consoles ever made. Yep. I had four um, 3124s, mm -hmm. so I had four, four channels of API, um, four sets of four, so I had 16, plus the 16 on board here. I mic'd the whole band live, we tracked everything live, and then oh. we just edit. I had like, so I'd have like kick, three kick mics, snare, and then I'd have tom, rack, top, bottom, floor, top, bottom, and I would sum using the auxiliary sense. Okay. So the thing with the console was, and then of course I had, um, you know, I had it with the with the busing here. 
there wasn't a piece of this console I wasn't using because we had the preamp being sent there, but then we were coming back on fader for monitor mix. Sure. So it was like every inch of this console was used for. Brilliant. And it sounded amazing. And our rough mixes, honestly, were almost impossible to beat. Sure. And you can ask Michael Brow, because we got like 11 mixes deep on a single yeah. with him. You know, it was tough because this is a really freaking great sounding console. It is. You know, it's, I, I, I think, yeah, I don't we're, know. We're super lucky to have it as the centerpiece of, of Vintage King Nashville. It's, it's a great board. I, I think API got it kind of right. If I was starting all over again, I've got a lot of gear and I wanted a console. I, I, I don't know if there's a better console on the market than this thing. Sure. And especially because it's all 500 series. Mm -hmm. So you can get crazy. You can sit there and start swapping stuff out and doing whatever you like. You know, me, I'm a 560 guy. I, I can't have enough of those. I just feel like it's quick, pull Is over. Is the visual and, aspect? Like you can yeah, kind of see what you're doing? I'm dumb. I'm not that smart, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just going, oh yeah, let's boost, some, boost a bit of kick. Although there is something very, very nice about 50 hertz on a kick. Mm -hmm. And it's a very API sound. Um, you know, Sunset Sound with their custom consoles still have, you know, 550s in there. And that's one of the things, you know, I like to reach for and I, I hear that 50s really, really nice. Yeah. Because 60 is modern, but you always want to have that 40 pulled up a lot as well. So you end up adding additional EQ right. on it. 50 seems to be quite the quite the right place to be. It's, you know? a, it's a sweet spot for sweet sure. Sweet spot, yeah. Beautiful console. Anyway, I did all the talking, but I know that console really well. No, so. absolutely. Let's, uh, let's go and have a look around here. So we have uh, some more monitors going on. Some PMCs. I know uh, Spike Stent loves those, doesn't he? What else you got? We've got barefoots. What are these? So those are key monitors. Don't know them. Um, their big thing is is uh, they can do everything cardioid, so it's all coming straight at you. Can I hear them? All right, we'll listen to the keys. They're nice, I like them. Yeah, and then that, that remote control does some EQ curves, and right. so you can kind of fine tune them to, Great. to your setup. Wonderful, now we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of 500 series here. Wow, some, just a few. Just a couple. Some Burl, Burl Mike Pre, make great stuff. Mm -hmm. The B1 is uh, is becoming kind of a standard with a lot of people I know love them. Yeah. Some Rupert Neve designs. Uh, the Millennia, I love this, it's really good. Some Shadow Hills. And the Grace I don't know too well, but I know people that love them. Yep, very clean, very detailed. I have six of these mm -hmm. or eight of these. How many do we have? We have a lot of them. Yeah. And we use them on our guitars, on bass, on everything. They're just outstanding. Um, oh, is this Spectra Sonics? Yeah, that's a Spectra. <sighs> I've got a, I have a pair of, in the, the black ones that we use on acoustic oh, yeah. guitar. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, we've been using them on electric for a long time now. We actually moved over to those and they are outstanding with a 610 yep. and everything. Yeah, that's my main guitar chain. So what's this? That's that. That's that mic pre. In ah, a 500 in series. A 500 series. Yep. Okay. Highly recommend guitars. If I guitars gun to my head, these are the two. Depending on which day, whatever. These. This is the sound for me. And I, I fell in love with these because of Jack Douglas because he told me that all the records that we assume in the 70s that were made in New York at the record fa at the the hit factory or the record plant were made using this stuff. Yeah, it was actually Spectra uh, yeah. parts inside those consoles. Yeah. Yep. So you know, we so I started. I grew up listening to those records and loving them. Thinking Neve, especially API. I was thinking. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, no, we use these. Yep. Wonderful. What we got going on down here? What's this? Uh, that's the Avitas MA5. Oh right. Avitas um, is very well known for being early in BAE and mm -hmm. with Brent Avril and part of the design, and has designed a lot of stuff for uh, BAE since. Yeah, it's a very very 1073, but with a 28k high shelf boost. That's insane. Just adds a little little top end air. And uh, this is amazing, because this is a level or it's like mm -hmm. a level lock mm -hmm. on the Shaw, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, really good. For those of you who don't know, Shaw used to have this like little console. I've got one um, sitting behind our SSL, and what it did is it was uh, for pro, uh, for PAs. Mm -hmm. And it would just like limit the signal so you wouldn't blow up your PA speakers. But people started realizing it was amazing on things like drums, because it would just give you Great on drum rooms, really yeah. fun on like, uh, dirty vocals, things yeah. like that. Yeah, it's amazing. I didn't want to meet, didn't mean to go past this, but obviously here's a beautiful Neve as well. Mm -hmm. um, what's this here? That's Neve 1073. That's 1073. I haven't seen a newer design. Yeah, it's a, it's a slightly different color. Yeah, it's like a brighter blue. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Chandler's wonderful stuff. 
No, oh, more EMI, yep. uh, Chandler. Yep. What is this? Uh, that's the Mercury. I don't know that. Uh, he's out of like San Francisco Bay Area. Right. Um, really clean. Um, yeah, really great sounding pre. Really great detailed stuff. Beautiful. Now, talking, going back to Jack Douglas in the 70s, when they were making those Aerosmith records, they were using a Spectrosonic console, but they had all the Flickinger stuff as well. Yeah. And as Ryan just told us off camera, it's uh, Skibby Electronics who's making it. They gave us, when we made the last Aerosmith record, a, um, a Flickinger um, compressor. It's a huge thing, and that was the sound of Sweet Emotion. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's just the bass DI going through that onto tape, you know. So, so Jack, Jack's the one that basically got me into these two stuff. So yeah. it's great that this guy, Skibby Electronics, went back and made these, all the Flickinger stuff, because sure. it's, it's very unique sounding. I know yeah. Ross Hogarth has these, loves them. So I don't know, any fans of like mid 70s, classic American rock, these are really the way to go. As much as we all love APIs and Neves, a lot, all the New York stuff was using this gear. Sure. Course, Marg, great company, mm -hmm. great family, really good people. And uh, is that, that's the air band up there, yeah. 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 I saw, you know, Vance Powell has the, has the uh, rack mount version right. just sitting on his, uh, between his monitors, right. that's just on every mix. Yep. With just the air added. Ah, oh, lovely, beautiful. Have one myself. 1073 with all full EQ and everything on a, on a triple wide. Um, oh, these are gorgeous, the Electrodynes. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous, what's this? Uh, that's Maris Audio. Don't know it. So they're, uh, they're building all sorts of interesting stuff, but their big thing is they have an effects loop post preamp. So if you right. want to insert say a guitar delay pedal after right. the preamp, you retain all the clarity, all the punch, Great. and you get to kind of mix it how you want. Fantastic. Now there's a 4000 bus compressor mm -hmm. there. Um, SSL's obviously own one. Don't know this Jensen Twin Servo, tell me about that's, that. That's from Radial. Good company, yeah. great guys. Yeah, solid solid stuff, sounds great. My DI is the best sounding DI's. For, I use my uh, stereo Radial DI on keyboards, it's built like a tank. Retro, great stuff. Really, really beautiful stuff. Is that tube in there? Yeah, there is. There's two. Oh, wow. There's two uh, 12x7s in there. And this is our new favorite company, Acme. We love Acme. Their um, DI is my new. That's why he's on the bass. Yep. It's got this massive transformer in it. We can actually get away with not using an amp anymore. Really? Because it has as much low end as you need, and it soaks up so much transient, so they barely have to compress it anymore. Mm -hmm. I've turned a lot of bass players in uh, LA onto it. Yeah. Great company, really good. And Detroit. Yep. Well, that's, the, that's the one that's a recreation of the DI out of... Uh, Motown one, yeah. yeah. I got John, but I got loads of guys on it. They all love it. Yeah, I've heard a lot of great things, but I want to demo one of them. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, it's dumb. You just sort of plug, it's got an attenuator, just, a, yeah, just plug it into it. It just sounds like a record. Really? Yeah, it does. It just so soaks up the transient, so you don't get all these stupid little fishtail peaks that you're, you're trying to control with compression or mix afterwards. It seems to just soak those up and the bottom end out of it's insane. Yes. It's like it's done some EQ for you as well. It's, it's like the dumb, it's like $425 retail, plug into it, print, yeah. Okay. Wow, that is not something I expected to see. They mm -hmm. built they, they built a Compex in a 500 into series? Into a 500, yep. That thing was like, that's like the learning curve. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> yeah. So. We could, we're gonna be on this for an hour. So the thing about this, which is quite remarkable, is this is probably one of the best sounding compressors ever made. However, it has a learning curve. I don't know about you, have you ever used one of these? Yeah. Okay. I spent about an hour and a half trying to get the, my room mics to come alive using this. And then suddenly I just got it to this place and I think I took photographs of it yeah. and put tape <laughs> on it. There's a bit of a learning curve with the balance to get this thing to sound good. But when it sounds good, it's like the best thing you've ever heard Can't on be rooms. Because yep. you can just get that timing with the kick and the snare and it, yeah. But there is a learning curve. Everybody I know, but 500 series, that's insane. Mm -hmm. the same electronics? Same same everything, yep. Really? Yep. And how much is this going for? I think it's like uh, $8.95. And then what about the stereo rack mount? Oh, it's like 22 24 All right, so a pair of those. Wow. That, the standard audio stuff is amazing. Next up, we have more Neve yep, EQ. Yeah, that's, that's just EQ. Great. Um, inward connections. Crystal Algae probably single-handedly owns half of the inward connections ever made. Absolutely. Racks of that stuff. Our good friend Steve Jackson, one of the nicest guys on the planet, 
and I use this on bass guitar for mixing. Yeah. I actually replaced it from the tube version. This is the one with the 2520 API in it, isn't right. it? And this sounds unbelievable on bass guitar. I just, I, I have it inserted on my console, and I just sit there, I think, what do we boost? We boost 60 or 100 now on that. I think we're boosting 60, and it's just life-changing. Just blends so beautifully with the bass. Inward connections, oh, the brat. Connections. Yeah. Grace. Oh, I've heard great things about this EQ. Yeah. More Neve? More Neve. Rupert Neve Designs. Oh, uh, lovely. Purple. Mm -hmm. These are like, this is like the API on acid, isn't mm -hmm. it? People love this. More Electrodyne. Mm -hmm. There's so much stuff going on here. Blue Stripe, 1176. Yeah. Yes. IGS, that's, uh, they're out of Poland. I've done a lot of stuff demos with them. You have? Really good guys, rock solid stuff. Unbelievable gear. Yeah, yeah. like just amazing. I interviewed Igor at Music Mess, actually. Oh, you did? Yeah, and um, I've got his uh, 500 series rack, the, uh, the Panzer 500, killer mm -hmm. stuff. I got the Ultra 500, I've got the Poltec, and he's making me an SSL compressor. That's awesome. Have you have you used the Tube Core? His... No, not yet. Oh, yeah, my. I, I get to play with that at Music Mess, it's just like, oh, my he God. Ma he makes a... Fairchild 670-ish, but with a wet dry on it, that is like... See, the thing about my wife's Polish, and I, I, I know the Wes Audio guys and all the Mima stuff. Yeah. The thing is about them is they're all like really smart. Like, mm -hmm. I went over there and they speak, most of them, like my wife speaks, you know, speak English, German, Russian, and Polish, mm -hmm. and they have a Latin-based education system. They're just like really freaking smart. And, you know, like 20 grand a year, there's a lot of money. So. They're building this stuff at like a fraction of the cost that we can. Yeah. But they're like, but, being, it, but being, it's overbuilt. It's, it's overbuilt, yeah. 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 Insane. It's I, I could not speak highly of more highly of them. Yeah, I've got the I've got the Mimos uh, 1176, Wes Audio One, and I've also got their um, SSL bus compressor. Yeah. And it's stupid good. Yeah, the IGS makes a um, it's like a 1178 called the Volfram, yeah. but with a wet dry, and it is it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, go Poland. My wife yep. will be happy. <laughs> um, oh, Moog. Tell yep. me about this. I don't know what this is. Um, so that's a ladder. So that's more of like a peak filter, kind of like a sweep, right. sweep sort of situation. That makes sense. That'd be fun to try. Mm -hmm. uh, more Shadow Hills. Yep. Not trying to ignore it. Shadow Hills make great stuff. So we've got some Smart. Um, I've demoed these. These are great. Mm -hmm. Really, really nice. This one we tried as well, the TK. We tried that when we were in uh, LA. Yeah. Great. This one, though, I don't know. This is a IGS that, as well. That's IGS. Cheaper. Yeah, so that's their Tube Core uh, 500. That's a, like a 660, like a mono Fairchild. Oh, wow. What's this? How much? Um, 900 bucks. Anything with the word Fairchild on 900 bucks is very rare. It, it's insane. It sounds so good. So this is uh, this retro. I have seen a few of these, but I've never heard one. It's it's big and woolly and tuby and sounds very throwback. I mean, it's it's an excellent excellent mic break. Right, great. All right, let's finish up here. What do we got going on down here? We got a twenty five hundred. Yep. Classic compressor. Uh, I'm not a bus compressor guy with this. I didn't didn't like it as much on the bus and compressor. However, as a parallel drum compressor, I don't know if I got a better one. Sure. Pretty amazing. Sure. Do, do you have any favorite uses? Uh, parallel drums, parallel electric guitars is really fun. Great, yeah, that it's, makes sense. It's a little stiff, but it, it's really good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, a, the API license plugin version of this mm -hmm. is almost more useful. I don't know what they did. Like mm -hmm. they probably can add more features. But don't get me wrong. On a on a parallel bus compressor, on on pretty much anything, like you're saying, guitars and drums, I don't think there's a better unit. Yep. It's because it's a it's fast and bright, mm -hmm. so it's really good for adding energy. Yep. But on the bus, I didn't. Didn't, didn't vibe I, I with wanted you. I wanted the SSL, you know. I wanted sure. that DBX VCA sound because we're so used to it. Half the time, I think, and this is any human being's fault, is like we get so used to something. It may or may not be better, but we're like, oh, that's the sound I'm looking for. But this is for a drum bus compressor. I don't know if there's a better thing. All right, um, Overstay. Ah, oh, this guy's a genius. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jeff's a yeah, it's Jeff Terzo, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, uh, unbelievable stuff. So what, what have you got? You've got... Uh, That's the MAS. Yep. Here's a stereo field effect. Yep. Stereo voltage. Wow. That's the saturator. This is what... I gotta go. I, I want to go and visit him and actually take a tour around his, his place. You should. Just to pick his brain, I think yeah. you'd, you'd be really... I interviewed him at AES last year for a little bit, and you can tell he's just like one of those guys that does this because he loves music. Yep. Yeah. All right, retro. This is amazing. Stay level's incredible. I'm gonna just bounce over this for a second to stay in retro land. This here 
is the single best bass compressor I've ever used. Obviously it does more than that, but why do I say bass? Because of this feature here. This side chain, allow, you can come in and you can let all of this low end pass. And I think I had it around about here and oh, you can press all of like above like 200 Hertz, bring it down mm -hmm. and just let that low end travel through. This is gorgeous. Yep. I mean, obviously it's got many, many more uses than just a bass compressor. Sure. But if you have enough money to have 50 pieces of equipment, put That's this on your bass guitar and you'll be crying how good it sounds in the mix. Yeah, unbelievable. All right, going back up again, sorry. Bryce Gonzalez, tell me about this. Um, yeah, so it, it, it is a, I would say it's Fairchild E a little bit. Right. Um, but uh, amazing on vocals, holy cow. Well, I know that uh, we, we worked with somebody, we went to somebody who was using one of these and loved it. Um, Classic 1176. Have you seen the Serpent 1176 yet? No. I, I, I walked by it at the show, but pretty good. Well, because it's got the, you can hit the different revisions on it. Yeah. And it's got a parallel on it. So it's just like. It's all the things you would want, yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's and it's like 14, 1400 bucks. Mm -hmm. And what, what are these lists for? Uh, like 18, 19. Yeah, and it's built in America. I think it's built in Detroit. Yep. Teletronics. Classic LA2A and a locomotive. Gorgeous. Very nice. Well, thank you. Yeah, man. I'm trying to think. Oh my! You see this? All right, we're gonna have to do this because Steve will kill me otherwise. All right. So we have all of Steve Jackson's Poltex, of which anybody who watches me knows I have six of these bleeding things, and I love them dearly. And Steve is a great guy, and he, his attention to detail is second to none. Cannot more highly recommend these. I hope you sell these pretty well. We do. Oh yeah. Okay, good. They're very deserving. Now, SPL, an amazing company. Um, what is this? I've never used this. That's the mastering compressor. Oh, wow. So a lot of, lot of different attack and release and different sidechain EQs, um, tons of features, really can dial in your threshold to like a scary, scary amount. It's cool. There's I mean, tubes it's, in it. There's all sorts of stuff going on. Yeah, I mean, it's SBL, they're just an incredible company. I have a lot of their stuff. They're just really precision built. Um, what is this? That's the Edwards. That is one of the best all tube mic pre's. Wow. And it's got a wood panel front. Mm -hmm. And as our old friend Mark Lothman with the good old fashioned 1073 workhorse. I've had one since they were first when Brent owned the company. Still works, never broken down. I don't know. Can't speak higher of this stuff. Sure. And uh, you probably sell a million of those. Oh, yeah. What are these? Oh, DMP. I have one myself. What is this? That's, that's the Martac MSS don't know what that is. 10. Um, a really very, very clean and detailed mic pre. It's really popular here in Nashville for bluegrass, um, anything that you're really trying to get as neutral great. of a sound as possible. Wow, love the look. Oh, yes. So I didn't know anything about this. And I looked at it and went, oh, what is this? And then I went and interviewed Joe Ciccarelli and he had a, he had a pair. And I was like, well, if Joe Ciccarelli uses them, they've got to be freaking good. Yeah. It's interesting because I, I had the Shadow Hills mastering compressor on loan and I didn't I didn't, couldn't find anything that I particularly, I was like, oh, and I didn't pay enough attention. And then I saw Joe Ciccarelli using it, and I'm like, I have to go back and use that. Yeah. Because the thing is, I know Joe, and if you've ever worked with him on any level, the guy is the most detail orientated. He will sit there and tweak and really put it through its paces. So if he uses something, then you know it's good. And Yeah, uh, so those are the Undertone Audio MP q Eric Valentine. Yep. Eric Valentine is one of the greatest producers alive. Next up, um, that's the Tea Garden Audio Magic Pre. Um, he's a he's a local to Nashville guy. Um, Look great with the VUs. Yeah. And this, oh, the Shelford. Yeah. I've Shelford used one channel. of these. These are great. Um, next up, oh, more retro. I use these as well. These are great EQs. Mm -hmm. Really fantastic. There's a, a that's an actual 1073. Yeah. And another, again, another locomotive. That's another their, locomotive. their tube pre. And last but no means least, we have oh the LA610. The old school <laughs> universal audio. Bada boom, bada bang. Ah, before we move away, there they are. There's the Spectrasonics. This is, these are absolutely amazing. So what's the difference between this? What's the V? The V610, um, you, have, you have stepped controls as uh, opposed to Total recall. Yep. And then uh, there's, a, there's a mic and a line input. The actual, the V610 can be used as a vocal chain if you want, as a vocal right. pre. There's enough headroom in there to do it. Great. Um, they're amazing. God bless them for keeping the same look. Mm -hmm. 
because it, it just looks so alien from you know the way our visuals look now but it, it just awesome just if, I, if i'm gonna have a 70s piece of retro gear i'd like it to look like the 70s absolutely <laughs> i'm simple like that all right well thank you ever so much for showing yeah. us around yeah. i really Pleasure. appreciate it please leave a bunch of comments and questions below that was a lot of fun we're having fun here at nam the party we got here early as the party was starting but it's it's building up behind us here have a marvelous time recording and mixing and we'll speak to you all again soon